In this problem, we have a complex fraction, and we're being asked to simplify it. So there's a bunch of different ways to do this, and I'm thinking we can simplify it nicely if we got rid of like all of these like little fractions in the numerator and in the denominator. So to do that, we can multiply by something in a clever way. So think about this. To get rid of the x here on the 1 over x, you can multiply by x. To get rid of the x squared here uh, below the 6, you can multiply by x squared. So if you multiply the whole top piece by x squared, it'll get rid of all the x's. But you can't just do that. You can't just multiply something by x squared. So what you do is you also divide by that. So basically what you're doing is you're multiplying by 1 in a clever way. Right? x squared over x squared is equal to 1. So we're just putting a 1 here. So we're really doing nothing to the equation. And so now what you do is, remember, there's parentheses here that are implied, is you distribute the x squared. So watch this x squared times 1 is going to give us x squared. x squared times 1 over x, so we'll have the minus. This x will cancel with one of the x's from the x squared, and we'll be left with x. And then x squared times this piece, it'll completely cancel it, so we'll just get minus 6. It'll get rid of the x squared. Now we do it on the bottom. x squared times 1 will give us x squared. Then we have the minus, and then x squared times 4 over x, well, one of the x's will cancel, so we're left with 4x. And then x squared times x squared here, on the bottom, these will cancel. x squared times 3 over x squared, so we're left with 3. So now what do we do? Well, we try to factor. So really, really cool strategy. Uh, if you ever go further in math, like in calculus, stuff like that, this stuff is really, really important. I can't emphasize how useful this type of math is. All right, this should factor, and I think we should be able to just guess. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. x x. I have not done this problem yet, so I was doing it now as I do the video. I just feel like it should. I doubt that's going to be the answer. So let's see. We need two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 1. So I think 3 and 2 will do it. And the 3 has to be negative because if you add negative 3 plus 2, you'll, you'll get negative 1. And negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. On the bottom, we need two numbers that multiply to 3 and add to negative 4. So I'm thinking 1 and 3. And if they're going to add to negative 4, they both must be negative. Oh, look at that. The x minus 3's go away. How nice. I love this. This is x plus 2 over x minus 1. What an awesome problem. And that would be the final answer. I really like these problems. Most people probably don't, but let me tell you, uh, this, is, this is good stuff. That's it.